Okay, finally done. And that took uh, 2 hours, 5 minutes, 43 seconds. That's actually an improvement. I made some changes to this machine the other day and managed to speed up the X and Y axes by 50%. So it would have taken another hour doing it uh, before I made that change. So that's a big improvement. So what this is is a 16 inch f 3.5 slumping mold for making a telescope primary mirror and uh, I've cut a nice deep dish here in this foam and it's got a groove around the edge and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a dam around the edge with this uh, weather stripping stuff and I'm gonna pour it full of refractory plaster and then what will happen is I'll get a convex um, mold that I can put in my kiln and I can slump a 16 inch mirror blank over so that uh, I can get a, a, a fast mirror without having to do a lot of grinding and the mirror will be thin too it's only going to be about three quarters of an inch thick but uh, of course since I'm not having to remove any material from it it'll still be full thickness so that's a beautiful thing it'll be lightweight fast mirror We'll see how it works. I've done this with uh, 10 inch and 12 inch now and it's worked pretty good. So I'm making the jump to 16 inch. So the next steps are, the surface is a little rough. I'm going to sand it nice, nice and smooth. This foam sands really easy. So I'll hit it with uh, 220 and maybe 400 sandpaper and get it nice and smooth. And then I'm going to put a coating of um, spray polyurethane on it to give it a nice hard surface. Um, I have I tried painting these with uh, like sandable primer and that turned out to be a disaster because the primer started dissolving the foam so but I found that spray polyurethane doesn't seem to bother the foam and once it hardens it's got a nice hard smooth surface and then once I've got a nice smooth hard surface on there I'm gonna wax it uh, like I said put the dam on here and then fill it with plaster and hopefully uh, the plaster mold will pop right out if I uh, do a good job of waxing it so that uh, it's not sticky. So we'll see. I'll show you some of the other steps in the process and hopefully in the end, far down the road, we'll have a 16 inch F3 telescope mirror blank that will only need a little bit of fine grinding and then uh, parabolizing. Fine grinding polishing and then parabolizing. We'll see how it goes. So here's the mold after sanding. I also uh, used a little bit of wood filler to fill in some uh, some deep um, gouges left by the, the cutter and uh, some gouges I made when I was attempting to sand it too. I, I was using this uh, 220 grit uh, sanding sponge and I, what I did was I took it to the uh, belt sander and I took the corners off of it with the belt sander because I found that uh, the corners were leaving gouges in the soft foam which uh, I have since uh, filled in with the wood filler and then uh, sanded again and I've put a couple coats of the Minwax fast drying polyurethane clear gloss on it and I'll sand it between coats with uh, maybe 400 grit sandpaper and uh, get this nice and smooth so that uh, when it's waxed and I pour the plaster in it, it the plaster will release from the mold when it's uh, when it's hard. If the if the surface is really rough, all those nooks and crannies will hold onto the plaster and it won't want to come out. So I'm trying to make it as smooth as possible. More to come. Okay, here's the uh, slumping mold form. It's been. Uh, sanded to 400 grit. It's been filled with wood filler in all the little divots and uh, rough areas. It's been filled, sanded to 400 grit. It's had a couple of coats of uh, polyurethane, spray polyurethane put on it. It's been sanded to 400 grit between coats and it's been waxed and it's just as slick as can be. So I've got the dam on it. Dam's installed. Just mixed up a big batch of uh, refractory plaster, and I'm about to pour it in here. And uh, we'll see what we get when the plaster hardens up. I'm going to turn off the camera and pour the plaster. And uh, you'll get to see the results. Well, there's the plaster poured into the mold. Oh, and I forgot to mention, 
the mold is sitting on a little platform I built that I can level. My workbench here isn't perfectly level, but this platform it's sitting on has three legs, and uh, they, they can screw in and out, and I can level the top of this platform. So when I pour molds like this, the, the, the top of it here, is, or the, well, what's going to be the bottom, will be perfectly level and flat. So that it'll sit on the bottom of my kiln and not rock back and forth, and I won't have problems with one side being thicker and one side being thinner, and the, the glass wanting to, um, you know, flow down one side more than the other because it's steeper. So I'll get uh, a more uniform shape this way with the, uh, with by pouring it on a level platform. So I've been using this level platform for years for for pouring all sorts of uh, plaster projects. It comes in really handy. And uh, now we just have to wait for it to uh, harden up. I'll take a look at it tomorrow. Hopefully it will pop right out of the mold without any trouble. It's going to be fairly thin, which is what I want. Um, it'll be probably a little over half inch thick in the middle and thinner at the edges. But that's okay. If it's too thick, it's liable to crack in the kiln as it heats up. So keeping it thin is good. It's less likely to crack. But I don't want it so thin that it won't support its own weight. So it's just sort of a delicate balance. And I think this is going to work fine. This is about the same the same thickness I was doing with the uh, with the 10 and the 12 inch slumping molds. So maybe a little bit thicker, but uh, it's bigger, so it needs to support its own weight better, but not much thicker. Well, we'll see how it works. Here's the finished slumping mold out of its own mold. I think I said earlier in the video I was going to pull it out the next morning. In reality, I left it in the mold for a few days. I've had problems with uh, these molds warping while they're really green and wet. So I left it uh, I left it in that mold for a couple of days, actually. Probably about three days, actually, I think it was, since I made the earlier part of the video and poured it. So three days. Um, let it get good and hard, develop some strength, dry out a little bit before I pulled it out. You can see how much curvature it has to it. I was aiming for 16 inch f3.5. We'll see what it actually turned out to be. Um, the foam isn't all that rigid and sometimes I don't hit exactly the target I was aiming for. So we'll see what it actually came out to be. But it's got a pretty darn strong curve to it. So it's probably close to what I was aiming for. 6 point, or three, f3.5, yeah. So we'll see how it goes. This needs to dry out completely. I may put it in the kiln at low temperature and uh, dry it out. And then once it's good and dry, it's ready for firing. I'll just set a uh, circle of 16 inch glass on top of it and fire it up to slumping temperature and let it slump down over the, uh, over the mold. And uh, see what I get. I haven't tried one this big yet, but it should be straightforward. I've done a lot of smaller ones, so we'll see what happens. I'll show you that later. Here I've uh, I've set the slumping mold on another piece of the pink foam. Uh, I had it on newspaper, but I don't want the newspaper to suck uh, the remaining moisture out of the plaster too quickly because it could cause uh, the plaster to warp. I've I've seen that happen in the past. Plaster this thin doesn't have a lot of strength to it, and um, if it dries too quickly, it can warp. And I don't want to introduce more astigmatism into the uh, the blank than it's already going to have. I'm sure there's some in this mold, so I don't want to introduce any more. So I'm putting it up on this piece of foam. I'm going to let it sit here and dry for a few more days until it gets a little drier. Dry enough to sand. I may hit it with some, like, 400 sandpaper and take some of the... Uh, some of the texture off of it, some of the remaining texture off of it, smooth it up a little more. And then uh, I have to wait until it's good and dry to do that, otherwise it'll just clog up the sandpaper. And then uh, then we'll go into the kiln. Uh, I need to get my big kiln ready and uh, dig out my 16 inch piece of glass and clean it really well. I've got a 16 inch uh, blank around here somewhere in storage. I need to dig it out, give it a thorough cleaning, and then uh, put everything in the kiln and uh, we'll see what happens. More later. Okay, got the big kiln in operation today. This is the big boy, the Clarkson. 
And I've got the 16-inch uh, slumping mold in there. I gave it a sand with uh, 400 grit sandpaper just to make it nice and smooth, get little ripples and stuff from the mold out of it. And uh, from the foam mold that I molded it in. And uh, it's nice and smooth now. I've got a 3 quarter inch thick 16 inch diameter piece of glass sitting on top of it that I'm going to slump down to F3.5, uh, hopefully, if everything works out. I've got a, uh, a sheet metal heat shield around it. You can see it there. And the reason I do that is because I'm using a ceramic kiln. Glass, proper glass kilns have heating elements in the top so that uh, every part of the glass is pretty much equidistant from the heating elements. But these ceramic kilns, they have heating elements in the sides. And the edges of the glass are a lot closer to the heating elements than the center. And what I found is that the edge of the glass will get a little too hot and it'll run down the sides of the mold. So the heat shield that I've got in there should help with that. So I'm going to program up the controller and run this through a, uh, a, a slumping cycle and an annealing cycle and we'll see what we got in the end. I'll show it to you when it's done. So here's the finished blank out of the kiln and I have to say this is the best looking blank I've ever slumped. It's just beautiful. Now this is a 16 inch blank but my gauge only goes out to 14 inches so but in 14 inches I'm just short of 5.2 millimeters of slump in 14 inches so I'll have to do a little calculation to see just what that equates to in uh, 16 but uh, it it's, it's a beautiful blank I really like it this went really well better than I was expecting very happy with it going to need a little rough, uh, little rough grinding and fine grinding. It's got some astigmatism. If I spin the, if I spin the gauge around, you know, and come at it from different directions, the numbers are a little different. So it's got some astigmatism, but a little bit of rough grinding followed by fine grinding will get rid of that. I think it's going to make a beautiful telescope plank. So that's how I do that. Thanks for watching.